How are you? You're better than me. <laughs> You're better than me right now. I just did a whole thing on Pokey's wedding, which was this weekend. And my computer was being funny. We turned it off, turned it on, and I lost all the images. So that said, this is going to be the biggest tease on the face of the earth. On Wednesday, I'm going to show you a couple little pictures today, as, as many as I could get up in one minute. Um, on Wednesday, I'm going to show you a whole lot more pictures of Pokey's wedding. And if uh, you go, who's Pokey? Well, it's her, it's a... Uh, Patricia Bolton, and she started Quilting Arts Magazine and Cloth, Paper, Scissors. She did Make It University at uh, in Houston. Let's see. And then she, well, the thing that she's, I mean, I can just rattle on and on and on and on. She had a TV show on PBS that Susan Braubaker Knapp has taken over for. But um, here's, here's the thing, what we all know her for right now is, of course, Craft Napa, which we enjoy and love everything about it. The wedding was incredible. I was going to show, and I, again, Pokey, I know she's going to try and get on. I'm so sorry. I'm like, I got to go be professional here. <laughs> I'm going to show again, show more images on Wednesday, but I woke up to this and I want to share this with you is Jennifer Sampoo's um, Instagram this morning. And it is, it is the best, the way she wrote the, what Jennifer wrote. Okay. She goes, um, what a blessed day. We all wish the newlyweds love, kindness, humor, gratitude, forgiveness, mutual respect, and a long life of preciousness. The, cere the ceremony began with uh, Carrie Bloomston, who wrote this book, um, asking all to pause, breathe, close our eyes for a moment, and think about what we'd like to wish for Pokey and Patrick. Thoughtful and full of soul, the day reflected a beautiful couple, both finding each other later in life. The quilts hugging the event were perfect. It was glorious. It was beautiful. It was just simply the best. Okay. So let me show you just what I could get up in one minute. I, I, ah! so anyways, uh, the night before on Friday night, we were invited up to the art barn to drop off quilts and it was up there that I met Cindy. I have heard so much about Cindy. Uh, you could drop your quilts off and then have a toast with them. Cindy's the person who Pokey was really making all the mask effort for in the beginning of the whole pandemic. And her husband is Nurse Cindy, and then her husband is in charge of oncology pediat pediatrics at UCSF. So, so it was great to finally meet the gal behind the scenes of Pokey's life, her BFF. So then here are the piles of quilts that were brought in. And when you arrived, it, this was on um, Pokey's property. When you arrived, where she was getting married was on the tennis court. And the whole ceremony was hugged with quilts. You were asked to bring quilts that filled the intention of the day, and it was just absolutely beautiful. And up above there, you're looking at Pokey's art barn. So this was uh, the altar, and it has a quilt that Pokey made for Patrick, and that's where they got married, and they're about the things in their life. It was just absolutely sweet beyond measure. When we got there, uh, an hour early at uh, 4.30, we were directed into the Redwoods and she had um, cocktails, hors d'oeuvres, and the, the mood was just, it, the, the joyousness, it was just palatable. It was fabulous. I probably knew about, oh, 12 people there, but nobody was shy. Everybody was having a blast. I mean, what can I say? It was absolutely the best. And then I have to tell, I'm out there, you know, with people, meeting people. 
And I feel this bumping on my legs and I'm like, what the heck? And it's Pokey's dog. And it <laughs> dressed up for the ceremony. And if you, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what the puppy did, but you will see. And that, this is the puppy's uh, caregiver right here. It was so wonderful. And I have to tell you, the weather completely cooperated, completely. And it was supposed to be 100. It was probably 85. I, it, it just couldn't be better. It was just plain magic, period, fabulous wonderful. A lot of her story can be um, reflected in the movie um, Under the Tuscan Sun. And so John and I came home and watched it after attending this, and it just warmed our hearts. So Pokey, we, I, if you're on, we love you. And on Wednesday, Jennifer shared the heart of it in her, in her Instagram, and I'm going to show the details on Wednesday because you guys did it. You did it right. All right. Yay. I hope your place is pulled back together. You pulled out all the stops. It was just the best, the best, the best. Uh, Friday night, we went out to dinner with Jennifer Sampu and her husband, Todd, you know, Jennifer's fabric designer. And I'll be working with her fabric when we do the paper piecing. And Todd, who um, owns CNT Publishing, along with his brother, Tony. And then also uh, Carrie. And it was completely inappropriate and the most fun on the face of the earth. John has been known to throw out questions that everyone kind of goes, what? And then everybody gets into. And he did it. And I can't tell you because it's that inappropriate. <laughs> So, <clears throat> so today we're talking about batiks and I'll show you some little manipulations here in my batik pot when we're done, but I think batiks are kind of a mystery on how they're made and, and when you see how they're made, you're, it's just going to blow your mind. But here's the thing. I vaguely remember doing an interview with Jenny Beyer, who does batiks for RJR, and it was 10 years ago at market. And so I caught up with her and 10 years ago, it's market, it's noisy, it's all of that. But I felt the way she explained how batiks are made was quite fascinating. So I want to play this little video for you and I hope you glean some things from it. I certainly did in rewatching it. Here we go. Ginny is going to walk us through the process of how the batiks that we love are made. And it is not simple. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, I, I, I came away from there thinking when all was said and done, how can we possibly pay only this much what we pay for these batiks? Because every single step of the way, except the washing machine stage, is done. Wow. Okay, wow. so here you have some of your older prints. I recognize these, right? Yes. Well, I, I went through, for the first line of batiks, I went through fabrics I had previously done to see is there a design that I felt would lend itself well to a batik design. And here's a couple of them. This was a really, really old one. I with recognize VIP it. Yes. Years and years ago. <laughs> And of course, we could never do anything that intricate, but I like the overall flow of the design. And so what I did is work with these, simplify them down into a pattern that actually, here Look you see the, the paisley. Up. Look at this, you guys. There's the Isn't paisley. it wonderful? And you don't even recognize them as being the same pattern. Right. But the thing about batik is you can't have any more than about a 10 inch repeat of the design because the what they call is a chop, the stamp, they mm -hmm. use to stamp the design. Yeah, let me show everybody this. Th this is well, really, like truly one paper. of your chops, right? Well, this one is a prototype done in aluminum. The actual oh, okay. chops are done in copper, but they do a prototype first in aluminum because the copper is so expensive, just to make sure the design is working. Here you can see the one, now this isn't one of my designs, but it's a chop done, and it, you can see how much heavier it is. Even oh, this is the real smaller. chamele. This is the real thing, and they do this grid on the back, and they wow. embed the copper into it. So that's the design, and that's why it can't be more than 8 to 10 inches. And there you have it. 
and the design is such that when they chop it, it just fits right together. How about for you? Yeah, big order. Very, very big order. It's a very big order. Nice to that. Okay, so now what I'm really surprised about is the cotton because we know it's different, right? No, 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 it's not different. This is exactly the same cotton that we use for any of the fabrics me? that you find in clothing. No, exactly the same. Feel the hand of it. I mean, it's just the nice, soft... But it feels so different on the bolt. And stitches differently, too. Well, the reason for that is the part of the process of doing the batiks is the wax that they put on to get the reasons for the design. Okay. And then they, when they remove that wax, they're boiled in these vats of water and everything, and uh, it, it melts the wax, it goes to the top, and they never ever quite get all that wax residual off the fabric, which is why it feels tighter by sometimes, and some fabrics, in fact, I was thrilled with the way, this is one of my prints, and you feel it, and I was just thrilled with how soft it was, and it depends on how well the facility who's doing wow. it Duh, how good a job they do getting the wax off. Now, is it like beeswax as we know it? Well, no, actually, they use a wax from a certain tree over there. Really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, You got yourself an education, I didn't did. you? I got a real education. <laughs> so tell us about this piece here. Okay, so this is kind of interesting to see the process. First, you start off with a raw cloth. Mm -hmm. And what we're after, this is a finished piece, but I'm going to show you the others. This is the finished piece, but the first step is to get the line work. Okay, so, and you see in this piece you've got some parts of the line are more orange, some are uh, darker, some are lighter, but it's just the line work that shows the pattern of the design. So they dye the fabric, and this. this is the first dyeing of the wow. fabric, and the purpose of this dye is strictly, strictly to get the line work. Okay. What they do is they, they lay out, they only work in 15 yard or 15 meter pieces at a time, and they lay it out on the ground, mm -hmm. on, on mats, and they do this little scrunching technique where they scrunch it all up, and then they have different techniques by which they will dye it. One of them is, for every color you have in here, there'll be a different guy with a little pot of dye and a sponge, and he goes along and sponges Did it Did you up. do it? I did. I did all of this. It was awesome. Really fun. Awesome. And then some of the guys, um, one of the techniques, they'll go with a sponge. Some of them might squirt water on Are there. Are there any women doing this or is it all men? Different techniques the women do, but not awesome. this part. I okay. didn't see any. I saw a woman in the dye house do the dyeing, but I didn't see her doing any of this. But okay. You no, know, it's hard. You're, so what happens is after they do this and dye it, then they. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. The wax is on it. The wax is on it. And wow. they painstakingly, they melt this wax with a stove that's sitting beside them. They take the chop. Where did I put my chop here? Um, they actually take the chop, dip it in the wax, stamp the fabric. Dip it in the wax, stamp the fabric. And it, it takes, you know, one guy working really hard all day long might, if he's lucky, be able to stamp 50 or 60 yards in a day. So you see how time consuming it is. Wow. So after that process. Look at this. Well, now, now they've bleached it because they don't want that dark color anymore except underneath the wax. So they bleach it and they put it in these big bats where they bleach the cloth. Mm -hmm. And after they bleach it, then they dye it again. So does that here then? And that's there. The wax is still on there. But they dye it now the color that you want for the background. Color. It's like silk screening, really, well, in a sense. In a way, it? yeah. yeah. But I, every single one of these processes is completely done by hand. And then, then they put this in those big vats and boiling water and melt the wax off, and you get your final. Do they, your so final then, piece. does the wax kind of rise and then they recycle? Yeah, I, actually, exactly. That's what they do. The wax floats to the top, and they wow. get these big skimmers and skim it off and put it to get hard again and then they melt it all I, over and reuse it. I had no idea. But what people have to realize, it's not like when we do the regular screen prints or fabrics that uh -huh. you've done that I've done before, where the, everything is mechanized and they're putting out thousands of yards at a time and they can print 3,000 yards, which might be the initial order, in no time at all. Well, with the batiks, these are just small little operations where one guy is painstakingly stamping the fabric. And then you've got other issues, just being the country that it is. So the first three shipments of the batiks were sent 
but the first one was almost a month late. Now, why was it a month late? Well, because the truck broke down on the way oh my to the dock and they missed the boat. So the next boat that was available didn't go from Sing didn't go to Singapore and out, it went to Korea and out. You know, I don't remember a lot of that conversation because you're worrying about other things, but it really is mind-blowing how batiks are made, and they've really come a long way. One of the pictures that got dumped, of course, was my batik quilt that I was going to show you, so I'm hoping if I hold it up, you can see. This is a quilt that was in my scrapbook, and one of the things with batiks, and I'll talk, this actually is hanging out at our headquarters right now. Um, what I love about this petite quilt is the outside border, if you want me to be truthful about it. Can I go a little bit smaller? Yeah. I love the way it's red on top and then blue on the bottom. And then the way I kind of have them merge one into the other um, on the borders just by, you know, putting it, let's say the bottom left, you know, uh, maybe blue goes up a little bit, upper right, coming down on the right, a couple reds go down, etc. So um, the other thing I want you to note here too is that um, there are a lot of neutrals. Let me get this over here. And neutral batiks are not that easy to get. The other day I mentioned that our store has them and I said, you know, if nothing else, get the lights. And we sold out of the half yard ones like that. I mean, gone because they're not available. Um, when we think of, I think we have quarter yard ones right now, I think. Don't kill me, Kristen, if we don't. Um, the point is, is that when you see light batiks, make sure you just buy some because you are going to need them. So let's go down to uh, the document camera and um, I'll talk about this in a little bit. Here is my uh, one of my um, bins of batiks. And the thing about batiks, and I, and I don't, Here's an exception to the rule, so I want to, I want you to know my pants are not on fire, but a lot of them are like basically one color, you know, well, here this one has some other colors in it, but like these are very um, kind of um, analogous on the color wheel next to each other. I mean, this is two colors, this is one color, and the fabrics don't necessarily give you a clue on who who you should play with. They, they just don't. Also, they've become more sophisticated in my book, too. I mean, I look at this and I go, well, who am I going to put this with? And so I can go to Joan's Color Wheel. I have my pocket one. And then let's say, let's say that this is this right here, okay? I'm going to go directly across. That's, um, We've gone over this over and over and over, but I'm just going to keep saying it lest the light bulb goes on for somebody. I'm going to go directly across the color wheel, and I'm going to pull up orange, and I know that that's going to be smashing together. Analogous, or not analogous, complementary. Complementary is across on the color wheel. Complementary works every single time. But then let's say you want something that has a little more snap, crackle, pop. You're going to want to pick tertiary or triangle triad. My fingers are on the triad. You don't need to use all three. You can just use two, but here, that's just sitting there on top. That's pretty snazzy. Let's say you want something soft. Okay, here we go again. Let me pull out a, a blue. A blue. That's beautiful. Let me pull out another one. Okay, but what's missing here? Really, what's missing are your lights. And this is not totally light, but it's a little light. Um, let me pull some of these out. And these are actually, I purchased these a while ago. There are better ones than this out there. When you get the lights in here, the whole thing is going to be absolutely wonderful. Now, we talked about the Katie. Oh, oh, I want to talk about this one. Okay, so like if I look at this one, well, this gives me the cue that I should go to there, or I should go to there. This is telling me what to do, but a lot of batiks are not going to tell you what to do. They're just not. And what's always so interesting to me when you see a color combination like this is here's this, here's this. It's almost complementary, 
Um, yeah, it's almost complementary. It's a split complementary. Okay, so what does that mean? They're across the wheel from each other on each side. Now, I am not an expert at this. Joan Wolfram is, as well as Katie Fowler. So here you've got these wheel. You've got a color wheel, a basic color wheel. And, well, let's look. Let's take disc three and get, let's see, four, five. These discs have... Um, have cutouts with it so you can put it on hold on you can put it on there on the color wheel and double of course it's going to be the last one i look at right um oh here here's our split complementary so for red okay what i just said before wasn't true then see follow the experts like katie and joan but here's a split complementary it works Let's take a look at analogous. That's always one of my favorite because it feels so soft and beautiful and subtle. So this color wheel is kind of a fun toy when you're working with things like batik or solids or something like that. Again, it's by Katie Fowler there. And of course, I spelt disc wrong on every single one. Um, but it's got all the different, um, different combinations. Somebody asked me, at a minimum, you need a color wheel, okay? Somebody asked me and emailed me and said, is there any such thing as a bad color combination? And I thought that was really interesting because, and first of all, thank you for asking that because it made me think a little bit. Um, I don't think so. I think it's just a matter of the results that you want and by what you put together. That's what's important, okay? But one other thing I want to talk about batiks, um, it, when I rewatched this before John edited it, I always was under the impression that batiks was a tighter weave, okay? Now, what I've learned in the last 20, and Jenny said no, because it's so hard to quilt, it's hard to hand quilt through. I mean, it's tough, okay? That's the wax, okay? But the other thing is normal cloth, or normal quilting cloth, is oh, maybe 65 square. That means you take a square of an inch and it tells you the thread cross this way and this way up to about 80 or 90, maybe a, maybe two, maybe a hundred. Um, batiks can be a little bit that is the issue. So that was fascinating to me. I would always pre-wash my batiks because who knows what's going to happen when when you wash it, if things are going to run or not. You know, and that's when you throw in your Centropol just to make sure. I haven't had a disaster, but I just my gut tells me that is what I would do. And, you know, it's, I will tell you the Cotton Patch in Lafayette, California has a ton of really great batiks. And you'll find when you go to your quilt shop, uh, there'll be a store that specializes them in your area. Now, I will tell you, on our quilt shop, I walked a ton of batiks in there, a ton of fat quarter bundles. So you might want to go check those out today. Uh, they're beautiful. And as you know, our girls, the women... <laughs> that work for us do a beautiful job when, when it comes to bundling and packaging and, and all that wonderful, wonderful stuff. So uh, you might want to check that out. So let me tell you what's going on today. As soon as I get off here, I'm going to be working with Jennifer Sampu, and we're going to put together something on ombre fabrics and digital printing. And that will show next Monday, okay? But this Wednesday... <laughs> You're going to see the rest of Pokey's wedding, the stuff that all... Fortunately, the pictures are still on my computer, but it takes a little bit of time to set them up. And this keeps you humble, man. And um, I, we'll do that on Wednesday with stripes and polka dots, which I love. I love them. Then Friday, we're doing a bit with Lilo on storing rulers. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you here. This painting over here is a batik. It was done by um, a gal in Door County, and the wax process that Ginny was just talking about, this is done with paintbrush in hand with wax. Uh, I love this piece of mine, and when we were putting back together the sewing room, I said, okay, that space is for that 
piece of fabric or that painting or painting or batik. And John said, well, why are you just putting stretched fabric up there? Put a quilt up there. And that's when I was abruptly reminded that when my time is over on this earth, please quilters help John. <laughs> Because that is not just a piece of cloth strapped on a frame. <laughs> so anyways, um, Pokey, if you're here, I apologize. It's technology. What do you do with that? Pokey is saying it was the happiest day of her life on Instagram. I believe it. The love there, the joy there, the soulfulness there was amazing. And to sum it up... One of Pokey's family members from Boston said, we were talking to him because we were talking to the pediatrics, the Department of Pediatrics, you know, um, Cindy's husband, and he heard pediatrics and he works in technology and pediatrics in Boston. And he said, I just love grown up weddings. <laughs> I do too. I just love grown up weddings. Where it's just about joy. So on Wednesday, I promise I'll have pictures. I, 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 right. And so I'm going to um, do a little interview with Jennifer that I'll, you'll see on Monday. And I intend to sew. And also this week, I'm going to start packing up for taping when we take off next week. So take care, you guys. Um, I wish every day could have been, you know, Pokey, it might have been your favorite day on the face of the earth. It, it was a beloved day, and there are certain days that are etched in your memory forever, and uh, it was your wedding, your and Patrick's wedding. Wow. Congratulations.